It is happening. Bank runs are accelerating. Bank runs are happening again. People thought it was over, but I've been trying to warn you, no, it's not over. Bank stocks are coming under severe fire again and are selling off and selling off quick. We just got new news and new data today that shows another regional bank is about to go under. Because I don't know about you, but I'm getting sick and tired of these news anchors, these analysts, these billionaire bankers trying to tell you every single day the system's fine, the system's sound. But every single week, another bank is going down. And I feel it's my job, it's my duty to inform you what's really going on, how bad it's really going to get, and how we can prepare. So everyone, this is definitely going to be a good one. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news, the facts, and the data. Could you have guessed it, everyone? PacWest shares plunge after reports drop in deposits. Now, I reported on PacWest uh, last week, and it said I think they could fail last week. But very fortunately for them, there was rumors that came out to save the regional banks that the U.S. government was thinking of banning short selling. And so this scared a lot of shorts. They covered their shorts. It caused a you know, massive short squeeze. Uh, their shares rebounded a lot. But the fundamental issue with these regional banks has not been fixed. People are still pulling out their money because one, they don't have faith in the regional banks. And two, they can get a much bigger return in money market funds. And none of those issues have been resolved yet. And like I went over in yesterday's video, it's not just these regional banks. Also, the big banks are seeing big deposit flights as well. But let's dig a bit deeper to see what's really going on. So listen to this. Shares of PacWest plunged 23% on Thursday after the Los Angeles-based lender said its deposits declined and that it had posted more collateral to the U.S. Federal Reserve to boost liquidity. Ah, so that's right, everyone. These banks are so sound, they're so strong, they're having to get emergency liquidity from the Federal Reserve. And if it wasn't for this new Federal Reserve facility, which it seems like every week they're creating some new facility to keep this Ponzi scheme, this house of cards going, and I don't say that lightly, everyone. The banking system is by definition a Ponzi scheme. They take your money out, lend it to another person, lend it to another person, lend it to another person in hopes that you don't ask for your money. And then on top of these loans, they also make toxic derivatives, which means there's even more risk for the banks. But let's keep reading. PacWest deposits fell 9.5% or 1.5 billion last week, with the majority of those outflows occurring on May 4th and May 5th, following news reports that the bank was exploring options to bolster its finances, including a sale. And I think the option for a sale is still not off the table. So we can see there, that's a big outflow for a bank of run, 9.5% of deposits. And sometimes all it can take is 20, 30% of customers withdrawing all their money for the bank to go under. They said the news headlines increased our customers' fears of the safety of their deposits. Shares of BackWest and other regional lenders fell sharply on Thursday after the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation said, listen to this, around 113 of the country's largest lenders will bear the cost of replenishing the 16 billion hit to deposit insurance fund caused by recent bank failures. So this is also more pain for the banks, also less profitability for the banks. So this is also gonna affect their stock price. They're now having to pay higher and higher insurance premiums because there's a lot higher risk now that there's gonna be more bank failures and the FDIC, like I've been talking about, is running out of money. A new special assessment fee of 0.125% will be applied to the uninsured deposits of banks in excess of $5 billion. But I'm sure what you're also wanting to know is what other banks will hit today as well. Well, Key Corp and Zion's Bancorp shared 2.5% and 4.5% respectively. Valley National Bancorp fell 2.8% and Commercia, which has also been getting hit pretty hard lately, I think they could be in some trouble as well, lost 6.8% and the KBW Regional Banking Index dropped 2.4%. So we're seeing here it's not just one isolated incident, it's starting to have domino and contagion effects across the whole industry. PacWest said it funded the shortfalls in its deposits with cash from its balance sheet and then pledged $5.1 billion of its assets to the Fed to secure additional liquidity of $3.9 billion. So again, if it wasn't for this Federal Reserve emergency liquidity pool, where this is absolutely crazy what the banks can do. They can take these assets like bonds, mortgage-backed securities, that they've got huge losses, sell it to the Fed and get the price what they paid for. This is absolutely ridiculous, everyone. And this is why we don't have free markets and capitalism anymore. And a lot of people maybe think capitalism's the reason for all the problems in the world. But no, it's this crony capitalism. It's this fascism with these few huge corporations working with the central banks, working with the government, getting special treatment 
And that means there's not opportunities for, say, for example, maybe you. If all the banks went under, maybe you would start a bank, okay? And then you would have some opportunities. But you can't possibly compete with these banks that can get access to billions and billions of dollars of money for free. So PacWest shares have lost only 40% so far this month and plunged to a record low last week and dropped a further 23% on Thursday. Short sales have made, this is how you can potentially make money, but it's very risky. I wouldn't do shorts. I would do puts, but... I'm not doing either of those. Short sellers have made $123 million by betting against PacWest, according to data from analytics firm Ortex. And of course, our favorite banker, Jamie Dimon, has weighed in on the situation as well. Dimon said he anticipated more banking regulation stemming from the crisis, adding that authorities, including the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, should investigate short selling on the bank stocks and potential collusion via social media posts. That's absolutely crazy, everyone. So Jamie Dimon, he wants to end free speech. He doesn't want anyone to inform you about how bad this banking crash is going to get he doesn't want anyone uh, giving an opinion this is just absolutely ridiculous and this is just showing the collusion that jp morgan has uh with the u.s government and how we're getting more and more fascism in the u.s because of course they agreed last week to acquire first republic bank in a 10.6 billion deal engineered by regulators and of course we're going to pay for all the losses and they're going to take all the gains but jamie diamond is also speaking out of both end of his mouth and he is also using his influence on the markets and he just came out with another warning as well so look at this jamie diamond warns panic will overtake markets as us approaches its debt default so this is just more and more theater everyone we know they're going to increase the debt limit we know there's really no ceiling that is going to keep on raising it and we're all going to pay for it. Again, he also weighed in on the regional banking situation here, but he's also speaking out of both ends of his mouth with this scenario as well. So he says here, regional banks are quite strong and will have good financial results, but managers are worried because of the bank runs that have taken down three firms. And he says, I think we have to assume there'll be a little more to the regional banking crisis. So does this make sense to everyone? On one hand, they're telling you, yep the banks are strong they're fine but on the other hand they're saying there's going to be more chaos uh, and a bigger crisis coming no it doesn't make sense at all but they think you aren't smart enough to figure it out but people on top of this banking crisis that is happening right now we just got more data to prove that the economy is getting worse so look at this u.s jobless claims rise to the highest since october in 2021 in a sign the labor market is cooling initial unemployment claims increased by 22,000 to 264,000 in the week ended may 6th the labor department data showed thursday the reading was higher than all estimates in the bloomberg survey of economists and something else that doesn't make sense is the unemployment rate is apparently at a 50-year low it's going down still to 3.4 percent but initial unemployment claims are rising job openings are falling and there's huge amounts of companies announcing mass layoffs so i think we're smart enough to figure out as well that the real unemployment rate is much higher and i bring up a chart here we can see the four week moving average also rose to late 20 uh, 21 levels last week this chart here, the top one uh, is initial jobless claims and beneath here is continuing claims and they're rising as well. So everyone, I know we're thinking, well, okay, what does all this economic jargon mean for you in simple terms? What this simply means is everyone, I think there's going to be more bank failures. You don't wanna have all your money uh, in one bank account. You wanna diversify it, especially if it's uninsured deposits. Uh, you wanna have some gold, silver, Bitcoin, etc., to hedge against a possible US government default and also your purchasing power continuing to be weakened and the unfortunate thing you have to start doing right now is saving paying off debt and getting prepared just in case you lose your job as well but everyone what do you think about all of this let me know down below now for my law viewers and subscribers who are watching you're awesome thanks for watching i'll see you all in the next video